Microsoft has the best selling consoles for January, new Xbox controller feature, CD Projekt Red gets hacked and more. Let's get into it. What is up guys, welcome back to yet another brand new video with myself, Major Ben. And today we've got some really exciting topics here to talk about. But I just wanna say thank you so much for all the support you've given me on my previous videos. It's been absolutely fantastic. You guys have smashed it as always. And I love that we're building an awesome gamer community here. Some of you might have noticed that there's new channel art here now. We have an awesome new logo and a banner on the channel. And also we have a new intro and outro coming to the channel soon. So please look out for that. It's gonna be flipping awesome. But anyway, enough of that let's get into what you are all here for which is these interesting topics around gaming so microsoft's xbox series x and s were the best selling consoles for january 2021 beating out both playstation 5 and the nintendo switch for the first time since launch as we know playstation 5 sold the best in november then the switch sold the best in december and now xbox in january microsoft's posted record profits in january with its new gaming hardware segment growing 86 percent due to the launch of the series x and S. Now before some of you guys go straight down to the comments and start talking about console shortages, I already know this guys, just give me a damn minute to explain myself. So yes, this is due to console shortages. Every single drop of Xbox Series S, X and PS5 has sold out within minutes. We all know this, these are flying off the shelves, it is so difficult to get hold of one, as soon as Microsoft makes one, it is essentially sold, and same for Sony at this point. So this makes it very, very difficult to get a true representation of sales on these consoles right now but this is fantastic news still for Microsoft. I personally believe this is going to be Microsoft's best selling console since the start of Xbox and it'll be the closest bridging the gap to Sony's behemoth sales that they usually make. I genuinely think that come the end of this generation, when we go into the 10th generation, it is going to be such a difficult decision to pick which console to go for. I mean you've got Microsoft who is really pushing their hardware and incredible software sales. As we all know they've increased their first party developers on a massive scale and show absolutely no sign of stopping. We're going to have so many new IPs here that we will want to see return in the 10th generation. This is what Sony is so good at, which is building hype. Like we've got Horizon Zero Dawn, the second part coming, and like The Last of Us that we had the previous generation. Sony is so good at building hype for their incredible storylines uh, when you get a second game coming out. This is exactly what Microsoft is going to do. We're going to have so many new IPs that will make a return in the 10th generation with their second versions and all their newer versions of that game. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What systems have you guys picked up or are you still trying to pick up? I know it's hectic out there and I hope you guys are getting the systems that you deserve. Guys, I am so flipping happy that I found this new feature out on the Series X controller. This isn't new, it was baked in from the start, but it's new to me and this has been a game changer to what I need. I mean, this is really a huge thing and really changes the way I use the system on a day-to-day -day basis. So if any of you guys have used xCloud, the Microsoft streaming platform where you can stream the game from your console or the cloud to your phone. Now, if any of you guys have used this, you will know how annoying it is to have to pair your Xbox Series X controller or One, or One X, whatever controller, to your phone every single time and then repair it back to the console when you want to use it for that. Now, this is no longer an issue. Your controller now remembers what system it is being used for. You know that sync button on the back of the controller that you used when you first got your console and probably never ever touched it again? Well, this has a secondary feature. Once synced to your phone for xCloud, the only thing you have to do to switch back to your console is to double tap this button. It will then switch directly back to your console and you can start controlling your console. To go back to your mobile device or the last recent Bluetooth paired device, you hold it down and as soon as it starts flashing, let go, it'll pair straight back to your mobile or PC, whatever you have last used. It is such a game changing feature. I can now go and have my poo while streaming the game from my Xbox and not have to spend time pairing my controller back to each device. I can now play Halo on the toilet. I feel like I've hyped this feature up way too much, but hopefully hopefully this does help some of you guys out because it's really been annoying for me. Now, going on to CD Projekt Red News today, they've had a really rough time recently. I actually feel so bad. The release of Cyberpunk did not go as planned. Yes, this was their fault, but it's still heartbreaking to see any developer go from games like The Witcher 3 and all the way down to games like the Cyberpunk release. I feel so sorry for them and I, I just hope they're doing okay, but they've had more on top of this. They have been 
targeted by a ransomware attacker who threatened to release their online data. But guys, don't worry, this isn't your online data. CD Projekt Red have reassured everybody that your user account data remains secure. So we should be fine, right? I mean, they're really good at what they do. Uh, we'll be fine, right? Is this game worth it? Eh. Does that answer your question? The ransomware hacker left a very well written message saying this. Hello, CD Projekt Red. You have been especially pwned. We have dumped full copies of the source code from your perforce server for Cyberpunk 2077, Witcher 3, Gwent, and the unreleased version of Witcher 3. We have also dumped all of your documents raising to accounting, administration, legal, HR, investor relations, and more. Also, we have encrypted all of your servers, but we understand that you can most most likely recover from backup so we completely wasted our time. If we will not come to an agreement, then your source codes will be sold or leaked online, and your documents will be sent to our contracts in gaming journalism. Your public image will go down the shitter even more, and people will see how you shitty company functions. Investors will lose trust in your company and the stocks will dive even lower. You have 48 hours to contact us. Now, obviously, since then, uh, oh, talking normally again. Since then, CG Project Red have made a statement saying they will not be cooperating with the hacker and that they are working on resolving the incident as soon as possible. Some people are speculating that this could have actually been an inside job uh, and that the developers may have done this as they would have had easy access to the Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 source code. I mean, I don't know. This seems dodgy. I don't know why a developer would do this with all the hate going on, but then I understand they've been criticized so much. Maybe they're trying to get back at the management part of uh, CD Projekt Red, but I don't know. I mean, I guess all we can say is that Cyberpunk got cyberpunked. It's okay. I'm, I'm just going to get in the bin now. Uh, I'm literally climbing in the bin as we speak. That joke was just bad. So another interesting topic that I thought I would add in uh, as apparently the PS5 actually is consuming more power than the latest RTX 3080 laptops, which is absolutely insane. So a test has been done running the Witcher 3 at 1080p. I have no idea why they did it at 1080p on these powerful bits of kit, uh, but on both the PS5 and the Asus ROG Zephyrus. And the PS5 consumes 180 to 200 watts of power when running this title compared to the 123 watts in the laptop. This laptop can draw power all the way up to 259 watts, but this never occurred during testing because the CPU and GPU were not even close to the maximum load during this gameplay. I'm very confused as to why the PS5 needed so much power for The Witcher 3 at only 1080p, but again, this game isn't fully optimized for the hardware, so I, I kind of understand it. Hopefully that's something they can fix. It should not be drawing that much power. I hate to see what it's going to be drawing in the future, and I'd be interested to see what Series X actually draws on that title. And then, onto some bad news for Assassin's Creed Valhalla fans as Ubisoft has included the option of an additional armor set for microtransactions into Valhalla. The controversy points out that there are now more sets that can be paid for separately than exist in the full game and people are not happy about that at all. In my opinion though guys I'm not too bothered about this because once I'm done with like a single player storyline like Valhalla I'm pretty much never going to go back to the game unless it's to replay it in the future but I fully understand guys don't worry i fully understand the sort of people who like to collect all the armor sets and feel they have then completed the full game and then only to find out that there's one more that they could have got that they just needed to pay for and it's just like you have to use your real hard earned cash money to then pay for this armor set but i must say one good thing that's coming out of it more and more in this gaming industry we are seeing people speak up about this kind of stuff and making the developers and managers at these companies aware that we are not happy with this kind of stuff that they're doing Doing. Just make sure that we all voice our opinions politely. No one ever deserves threats to their life over a damn video game microtransaction. But we will have to see what happens with this. Ubisoft have always had a thing of putting microtransactions in their games, uh, but we'll have to wait and see and hopefully uh, we get what we want. And finally, for the last part of this video, we have a fun little topic here to end this off today. Uh, have you ever thought to yourself, what would a console look like if Microsoft bought Sony? 
No, me neither. Me neither, never at all, never even crossed my mind. Well, apparently, over at the tech blog, they have. I have to give photo credits to this footage in the background to Ismail Mitz. Sorry if I butchered your name, but I did my best. Um, so this is his mock-up of the system, but damn, that looks like an interesting piece of hardware. Let's hope it shares more dimensions in terms of the Xbox side over the PlayStation side. Otherwise, that is going to be one thick boy console. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my video. I do post every single Monday and Friday at 6 p.m. GMT, and if I ever miss an upload, then I do apologize. I'm very new to this whole fully editing videos and, and working on big projects like this, so I'm doing my best, and hopefully the content is coming through and showing what I can do. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do consider liking and subscribing, and also, it'll be awesome if you come down to the Discord in the description of this video. Uh, we have a cool server where we talk about games, movies, and music, and random stuff, so please do check that out if you are interested. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a fantastic fantastic week ahead and I'll be back with another video on Friday at 6pm. Thank you.